Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. I feel like I've done a similar problem before, maybe the exact same one if I did, I apologize, it's been a long time if I did. Let me know if you can find something similar to this. Anyways, we have 1 plus x to the power 1 over x equals 4. Now before we, we start solving this problem, I want to bring something to your attention. Now what happens if x approaches 0. We kind of get something like 1 to the power 1 over 0, which is 1 to the power infinity. Any power of 1 is 1, but do you think if we take the limit as x approaches 0, this is going to approach 1? Something to think about, because the result will be pretty interesting if you work with the limit. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and try to find the x values that satisfy this equation, if there are any. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. Alright? So, let's see how we can solve something like this. Obviously, for problems like these, you may want to use substitution. For example, you can replace x with something, or 1 over x with something, or 1 plus x with something. For example, if I set 1 plus x equal to t, from here x is going to be t minus 1, and 1 over x is just going to be 1 over t minus 1, and this is going to give me t to the power 1 over t minus 1 equals 4. And then by raising both sides to the power t minus 1, I'm going to get t equals 4 to the power t minus 1. And then I can kind of write this as t equals 4 to the t divided by 4. And then eventually I can go ahead and write this as t times 4 to the power negative t equals 1 over 4. Obviously, my goal here is to use Lambert's w function. And as you should know, if you want to use Lambert's w, you kind of need something like, you know, y times e to the y, or something times e to the power something, right? Because when you Lambert both sides with this, you're going to get y at the end. So it kind of takes out the y from y e to the y. In other words, it's the inverse function. Make sense? So I can definitely do that from here because 4 can be replaced with e to the power ln 4 and then raise it to the power negative t. And then we can do a little bit of adjustment with this and we're going to get what we want, you know. But I want to do it a little differently. But this is definitely a method to go about it. You can go ahead and explore. So here's what I want to do. Can I solve this problem without replacing, uh, you know, 1 plus x with t or something like that? How can I solve it? I could definitely use natural log. Let's go ahead and natural log both sides. And, and let's see what that's going to give us. But you've seen at least one way to approach the problem, hopefully, right? Now, let's go ahead and take a look. If you go ahead and natural log both sides, it's going to give us the following. And then I can go ahead and bring the 1 over x to the front. That's going to give me ln 1 plus x divided by x equals ln 4. Now, at this point, you may want to try to match up the lns. For example, if x is equal to 3, then I'm going to be getting ln 4 on the left, but it's also going to give me an additional 3 at the bottom. So ln 4 over 3, obviously, does not equal ln 4. So this form is not going to help me. So I have to manipulate a little bit more, right? So here's what I can do. I can go ahead and look for ways to break down the 4, right? So... I, mean, I could probably write this as ln, still, this would probably be a better way to keep it at, like this. And then ln 4, I want to write it as ln 2 squared, and maybe write it as 2 ln 2. Now think about if this would work for you. For example, if x is equal to 1, this is going to work, right? Because 1 is going to give us ln 2. The problem with that is, though, uh, you're going to get ln2 once only. You see, that's going to be the problem. So it looks like this is going to be the positive powers are not going to work because pretty much what I can get from 4 is 2 squared. But what if I did, you know, distort this a little bit and kind of write this as ln 1 half to the power negative 2. Would that work, you think? Let's try I'm going to go ahead and move the negative 2 to the front. 1 over x times ln 1 plus x equals negative 2 times ln 1 half. So here's what I want. If 1 over x can be negative 2, whereas 
this can be a one half. Is that correct? If one over x is negative two, that means x is negative one half. And if one plus x is one half, that means x is negative one half. So yes, confirmed, x equals negative one half is going to work. Awesome. Is that the only value that works? That's what we gotta explore now, right? But we know at least one solution. So let's go back to the original and let's see how that play, plays out in the original one. Well, if x is equal to negative one half, we get one minus one half to the power negative two, which is two to the power negative two, which is equal to, I'm sorry, one half to the power negative two, which is four. Okay, here we go. In other words, you can write this as two to the two or like this. Make sense? That's actually how I came up with this problem. I thought of an equation like this, and then I filled in with some x value. That would be hard to guess, which obviously is a fraction, and to make matters worse, I picked a negative fraction. Sorry, that was kind of evil, but that's how you come up with problems. The process is kind of evil. Anyways, you get the idea, x equals negative one half works. Hey, we got at least one solution. Now let's go ahead and explore for other solutions. So I'm gonna look at this from a functional perspective. Before I show you the graph, I just wanna do a little bit of calculus because guess what, calculus is fun and it's not as scary as it sounds. Now, we're gonna go ahead and differentiate both sides, but how do you differentiate something like this? I'm gonna write it as e to the power ln one plus x to the power one over x and then I can write it as e to the power one over x times ln one plus x or ln one plus x over x, which is obviously a little better because I can use the quotient rule. Now by using the chain rule, this is gonna be the same thing times the derivative of the inside by chain rule, but that's a quotient, so it's gonna be the derivative of ln one plus x, which is one over one plus x, right, times x minus the derivative of x which is one by ln one plus x divided by x squared. And obviously when you set this equal to zero, this guy here cannot be zero because that is one plus x to the power one over x, remember? And obviously this can't be zero because, well, it can be zero if x is negative one, right? Wait a minute, did I say it can't be zero? Yes, uh, so here's the problem. When you write it as e to the power ln something, then you can't have negative one. But if you write it like that, you can have x equals negative one. But anyways, we want the base to be uh, positive in order for this to be well-defined because we're dealing with real numbers here. Anyways, let's go ahead and set this one equal to zero. What happens if you set this equal to zero? That's something for you to find out. Now, if I set that equal to zero, I'm gonna get x over x plus one minus ln one plus x equals zero. And from here, we're gonna get an interesting equation, ln one plus x is just gonna be, or I could probably keep it the same way, x over x plus one is gonna be ln one plus x, okay? Now, you might be looking for a solution to this equation, and guess what? I found one, <laughs> x equals zero, okay? If you look at x equals zero, it's gonna be satisfied at zero. Now, what did we find so far? We found that x equals negative one half is a solution. So let's go ahead and look at the graph of this function. First of all, do you think this function is going to be, do you think this function is going to be increasing, decreasing, or both, right? It could be doing both. Well, here's the thing. When you look at e to the power ln one plus x over x, you're gonna realize that this function actually, as x increases, this is going to grow faster, right? And as x grows faster, this is going to approach one. And as x gets bigger and bigger, this is going to give you a really large quantity with a negative sign. So that's gonna become negative for sure. In other words, when you look at the derivative of this function, it is probably going to be a decreasing function. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up with some visuals. And as you can see, the graph of one plus x to the power one over x is a decreasing function. You can also look at the limit as x approaches infinity, as x approaches negative infinity, if there are any asymptotes. What, happened at zero, what happens at zero? You should definitely have a open dot. And as you can see, negative one half 
is the only solution for x and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye